problems that are bedeviling the deputy president has nothing to do with Raila Odinga. It has everything to do with Uhuru Kenyatta, planning by himself. Muluko mena amekuwa kama ni yetu ndi anajua kuongea na kutukana watu. Na kutukana viongozi wengine. Na kutukana rais. So uambie, muambie na nyinyi watu wa television, muambie muluko mumfikishe. Awe na adabu na muheshimu rais wa, wa Kenya hii. All right, so that's the cabinet secretary in charge of environment affairs, Keria Kotobiko, will shortly be playing another clip of uh, himself calling the deputy president to be a clerk mm -hmm. of the president. But as we do that, Senator Gerard Gay, of course, we are seeing the division. We yesterday had the deputy president, William Ruto, calling on uh, cabinet officers as well as the senior government officials not to be involved in what he called kiburi, but instead if they, are, they want to focus on siasa, then they have to go slowly. Are we seeing the entrenchment of the division within the cabinet two years to the election? Uh, uh, thank you, Sam. And, uh, and I saw you covering that story yesterday at 1 p.m. on the East Excelsior Deputy President spoke uh, at the AIC in the river. I, I agree we are facing a very interesting cabinet. It's a, a cabinet that we have never seen since the independence of this country. Because uh, the president, uh, a few months ago, or even late last year or early this year, he said that uh, he will not allow any cabinet minister to do politics or to do... And you remember, even Mwangi Kiwinjuri, the former cabinet minister in charge of culture, was allegedly kicked out of office because uh, of too much politicking. So what we are seeing now are cabinet secretaries that are wrong, that uh, no longer follow instructions, that are behind that disrespecting the deputy president, and it is very sad that uh, some of these cabinet secretaries are looking forward to running for political office. So the only option since we know, and you know the, the constitution, Sam, was that a cabinet secretary should not be politicians. Uh, and, and it is sad that when you see cabinet secretaries uh, throwing barbs here and there, using government resources to campaign, to belittle others, to disrespect his and the deputy president. So from where I sit, I think the cabinet that we have in this country now is one of the raw cabinet that we have ever seen. And my advice that since the president had said before that if you start politicking, you leave the, the, the cabinet, I would advise them if you want politics, let them come and uh, roll their sleeves and then we meet in the political arena. So right. I, I think the cabinet is more divided, the cabinet that we are having. as well. But I want the only the blame that squarely falls is also on the president Uhuru Kenyatta. Because he has failed to reign on the cabinet. And, and I always stand from my own observation, Sam, mm -hmm. is that the, the president has uh, the, the, some specific instructions that cabinet secretaries have been given to undermine, disrespect, belittle, and look down upon the ESEX and the deputy president. So I think that when the back stops with the president, All right. uh, it seems they have his blessings because the way they talk with authority, it, 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 it is not a normal authority. So I think if, if the president is honest, if it was a functioning cabinet, as I conclude Kituku, those mm -hmm. cabinet ministers should have been sacked the moment they uttered those barbs and uh, those disrespecting words, and they should be sent packing and allow them to go and do politicking. Then we'll see the, 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 the steel they are made of. Okay, all, all right. It, um, you said that they should have been sacked for what they said. Let's listen to what uh, C.S. Tobiko said. Of course, he's a neighbor to Senator Olekina before we get to him. Na hata huyo mkubwa wake, huyo mkubwa wake ni karani wa rais. Si ni karani wa rais? The deputy president is a clerk. We should be a clerk. Assistant uh, president. Na vile mimi na mweshimu rais wangu wamba mimi ni clerk wake, karani wake. Hata huyo deputy na huyo murkomen wa mweshimu rais. I'm not bothered about junior people who call me names. Because I, I would really have wasted a lot of my very valuable time thinking about small people with insults. I am more focused about what Kenya requires of me. I know you don't sit in the cabinet, Senator Olekina. In fact, your party is not... Um or is it? It's not in government. Uh, so, C.S. <laughs> Tobiko there, just a minute, Senator Chirage. Uh, C.S. Tobiko there speaking so aggressively against the deputy president. Where did all this begin? I, I really don't know. First of all, let me be honest. I didn't hear because uh, the clip was not playing. In fact, I was trying to uh, get it on YouTube. Uh -huh. But I think uh, from a general concept, I think 
as leaders, we must respect each other. You know, we are elected and some of us are appointed. Elected means you are there to represent people. Mm -hmm. You know, I had my party leader uh, talking to us yesterday and talking to elected leaders and said, when you go there, you're carrying a big flag representing your people. I think it's about time that we respect that. Now, to the appointed uh, authorities, I think they also need to respect elected leaders, to be honest with you. And um, I have a lot of respect for anyone who is a leader because I know that person is ordained by God to become a leader. So my advice to uh, the two lawyers fighting that what they should do um, in this case, uh, they should just respect one another. I think, uh, I think the deputy president deserves some respect. Uh, just like cabinet secretaries deserve respect and elected leaders de deserve respect. Mm -hmm. So let's not teach our children that, you, you know, so long as you're appointed or so long as you're elected, you can just go out there, you know, and uh, just, um, you know, issue all manners of uh, insulting words or threatening. It's not fair. Uh, we have to teach the younger generation okay. that for you to be respected, you must respect others. Okay, all right, all right. G G Governor, Governor Kahiga, as Senator Cherege, I hear you there, but Governor Kahiga, so we are seeing this at the helm of your political party. You sold to us a ticket of uh, Jubilee, Uhuruto, Tuko Pamoja, but recently we were told by the Deputy President that uh, in the first time it was Uhuruto, now it is Uhuru and then there is Ruto. Are we seeing the start of uh, the death of that political party and ambition that you came with in 2017? Uh, thank you, Sam. Uh, I think I, on this matter, uh, I, I just want to say that uh, the intrigues we keep seeing are towards the 2022 um, uh, elections, and uh, this is how politicians behave, unfortunately. Uh, we pray that uh, we will have uh, our, our party will settle and um, move towards um, a realization of its uh, agenda to the people of Kenya, and we wish all of them very well. Mine is to simply say that uh, I agree with uh, Senator Olekina. Uh, elected leaders must be respected. I would have expected that uh, the, former, uh, the, the, the former DPP would understand the law and know that clearly the Constitution Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't envisage the position of deputy president to be a clerk. Really, that is basic. Even uh, all, we we all understand, and I think let's forget individuals and and give a lot of respect to the offices they hold. Those offices are held in trust uh, to the people of Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's the governor, the senator, and and really it. it, it uh, it is not easy even to get elected as an MCA. It is not easy. I think it is important that uh, these, these offices are respected, all of them, from MCA all the way up to the presidency. Let's respect them it, because it's not about even the individual holding the office at a particular time, but the people who stood in the lines from morning to evening to but, but, but governor, governor, to vote for MCF. Right. Yeah. G governor, what do you say? Because some of the cabinet secretaries are agitated and saying that um, these early campaigns that are being perceived to, on the side of the deputy president are forthcoming and not uh, focused on the agenda of the Jubilee Party as it begins. I, I mean, the Jubilee administration as it stands now. How do you reconcile that? My opinion is that you don't correct a wrong by doing the same wrong. I think if it's we 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 have we have we all need to listen to what the president has said and follow it. The president has said it's time to work. It's time for governors to work. It's time for senators to work. It's time for the deputy president to work. And it also behoves cabinet secretaries to get down to work. The president has an agenda to fulfill in two years. Let's work towards giving him, working towards uh, helping him achieve his legacy especially the people that are in Jubilee. I think we have no choice. We have to listen to the president. Okay. He is committed to ensuring there is a legacy. Any kind of politicking by whoever is going to derail the legacy of the president, and all of us are guilty if we start politicking. 
Uh, and Senator, as we conclude on this, Senator, yesterday we saw the Deputy President there in Athi River attending a chat service, but later on addressing crowds. Never mind what um, the recommendations from the Minister of Health on uh, what guidelines should be observed to contain the COVID-19. But he appeared to be saying that they are saying that uh, we will not succeed in 2022, that Hasla cannot become unless they have a father who is known. Isn't this politicking and does it derail the legacy of President Kenyatta like Governor Gahiga insinuates? No, I, I don't think from where I sit uh, that His Excellency, the Deputy President, is relaying by President Uhuru Kenyatta's legacy. As you heard the other time that this, this second term has been about President Uhuru Kenyatta building his own legacy uh, before he exits power in 2022. From where I sit, the Deputy President uh, was just greeting the people due to public demand and as the hustlers club or the people's club he was comfortable to do it so uh, i from where i sit there is no early campaigns uh, that does no more any politician even uh, my brother kahika and my brother ledama will tell you when you are in the in your county people will just come and when you talk to them it does not mean you are doing uh, uh, campaigns but, but for, i want to assure you that come 2022 the dynasties must fall because every Kenyan has a right to run for presidency. Every Kenyan has a right to be who they want to be in this country. You don't need to have a blue blood or to have your father being president or a chief or a mze or a mita for you to be one. So I, I think from where I let, let, let me ask you, Senator, uh, let me ask you, because you said dynasties my, uh, must fall, who are you referring to as the dynasty in the current political arrangement? Of course, the dynasties that have been running the country are known. The, 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 the Kenyatta families. The, the, the families that have been power for the longest time possible, and it is in the public domain. Kenyans know who they are. You mentioned so, one so family. Why is it? Yes. You mentioned one family. You yeah, said... the Moi family, the, 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 the families that have been in power for the longest time possible. And, and I think from where I sit, uh, uh, let us allow also other Kenyans to. to but, run Senator, the like... I don't think Uhuru Kenyatta is on the ballot in 2022 for president. He cannot. He's disqualified uh, in the Constitution. I am not sure about the Moy family, if anyone is running for president in 2022. So when you say dynasties must fall, how does that work for Deputy President William Ruto? Of course, of course, the narrative that has been built in this country is that uh, you must uh, have connections, you must, be, uh, you must be connected, you must be the people that are known. And what we are just saying is that when we say dynasties, these are people that have built uh, the, the, the empires over the years. Through, through the country. And from where I sit, I think the, the deputy president, the only mistake that he has is that his father was not known. And I think that is where, <laughs> the, when you see all this narrative, even the Odinka family, the Raila Odinka families, people are saying, no, when we move from this family to another, to another. So where we sit is all the dynasties from even the corporate center, even at your village level, the Museo Amita is dynasty. So we must ensure that all dynasties from the presidential level to the lowest MCA, they must fall and we ensure even the rising of Hasla Nation. That will be represented by the Deputy President, Dr. William Ruto. All, all right, Senator. I take notice that um, uh, one uh, William Ruto has been in elective politics since 1997, so that's about um, 23 years. But Senator Olekina, what are we dealing with here? Dynasties... <laughs> not a dynasty. <laughs> just, just, just a moment. Uh, Senator Olekina, what are we dealing with here? The... the, the um, Title dynasties versus hustlers and what we're dealing with, uh, politics of 2022? I, I think for me, I want to disassociate myself with arguments of dynasties and hustlers. I think uh, it's about time that in this country we offer ideology. And I think any leader who wants to become president after 2022 must now start uh, telling Kenyans what they believe in. We, we see a philosophy where uh, one person wants to immense all the wealth, you know, line their own pocket, you know, and we see, and we now have to move away from that. We need to think about what, you know, this life is being a circle. You are here today, tomorrow you're gone. So what we need to do is to try and, and understand the needs of our people, you know. So let us preach ideology and stay away from this divisive politics of dynasty versus hustler. I will never associate myself with any of those uh, arguments. I want to see Kenya really um, <clears throat> maximize its potential. If you come to Naro County, it's one of the most beautiful counties. If you go to Kiambu County right here, it's, a, it's one of the most beautiful counties. Let's talk about the wealth. Let's talk of our people. Our people are industrious. You know, let us not become divisive because this issue of politics, and I can tell you, 
coronavirus or not, you know, people will still do their politics. I mean, we saw the president the other day when he went, people came to him and he said, he said hi, he spoke to them. We saw the deputy president going out there, you know, and people come and they talk. Even us, our service leaders, whenever we go into our constituencies, we allow people. But because of safety and because I personally believe that corona is actually there, I've got certain friends who have died of corona, I tend to protect my, my people and my family because I think that we have to, first of all, come together as a nation, talk about ideologies, share ideologies. I want to hear someone coming and saying, I want to create jobs. I want to be able to build hospitals, uh, send more money to counties. But this issue of hustler, you know, dynasty, really, it's nothing but divisive and uh, outdated politics. And we need to really uh, grow up, you know, sort of like big up our game. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, uh, Senator Leda Molekina, Senator Samson Cheragay, and Governor Mutai Gahiga of Nyeri County for speaking to us this morning to have that conversation about those three uh, crucial topics that have been forming conversations in the course of this week. That's our time on that conversation or here on Daybreak, but you should take a short break. We come back uh, with the Chief Administrative Secretary at the Public Service and Gender Affairs Ministry, that is Rachel Shebesh, will be talking about um, the rethinking gender equality at a time that uh, has uh, the equality path has been hampered by the situation in politics as well as the COVID-19 pandemic that has been rocking the country for six months now. We had that conversation after the break.